Hey guys, thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to be going over the week 5 concepts for Physics 111. So starting off with the definition of force, we see that a force is something capable of changing an object's state of motion. So we could think of this as a push or a pull. We also see that a force is a vector unit, so we know it's going to have both a magnitude and a direction. We also see that net force is going to be equal to the vector sum of all the forces in the system. So we have two main types of forces, which include contact forces, like pushing or pulling an object, and field forces, which would include magnetism or, for instance, the electrical forces within an atom. So we have two main units of force. We have the standard metric unit, which is going to be the Newton. And if we think of uh, our equation that almost everyone has seen before, force equals mass times acceleration, we see that acceleration, we have our common unit of meters per second squared, and then for mass, we have our kilograms. So it makes sense that the Newton or the unit of force would be kilograms times meters per second squared. Now below we have the American unit, which is the pound, and this is slugs times feet per second squared. Uh, so basically a slug is an American unit for measuring mass, and then feet per second squared is going to be the common unit used uh, to measure acceleration. So next we're going to be talking about the differences between mass and weight. So mass is the quantity or amount of matter within an object, and then weight is going to be the force of gravity upon that matter. So we see that one kilogram weighs 9.81 newtons. So if we think of the equation above where force equals mass times acceleration, here we're looking for the force of gravity because that's what weight is. So if we do force equals one kilogram times our force of gravity, which we know is 9.81 meters per second squared, we know that our weight is going to be equal to 9.81 newtons. And we also see that one kilogram weighs 2.2 pounds. So basically this is just to give an idea of the conversion between uh, kilograms and pounds. And then lastly, we're also going to have to think about how we would measure, uh, for instance, mass versus weight. So in order to measure the weight of an object, we want to find the force of gravity upon the object. So we're going to use a scale. And then in order to measure mass, we want to know the amount or the quantity of matter within an object. So that's where we would use a balance. And lastly, we're just going to quickly talk about inertia which is the tendency of an object to maintain its state of motion. And what we can think of here is, for instance, sitting in a car. So if we're going at a certain speed, then we decide to step on the brakes. When we do slow down, it's going to feel like we're uh, moving forward within the car. And the reason for this is because our bodies have a natural tendency to stay in motion, just like any other object. So uh, since the car is slowing down, our body uh, tends to stay in the motion it was in before, so it's going to stay at that higher speed, and that's why uh, we have that sensation of uh, moving forward within the car. And the same thing applies uh, when we're driving at a slow speed and then start speeding up. That's the reason why uh, we are pushed into our seat or why it feels like that. All right, next we're going to be talking about Newton's laws. So starting off with Newton's first law of motion, we see that this law is often called the law of inertia. That's because it states an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by a non-zero net force. So basically knowing this, we can make the statement that if the net force is equal to zero, then we also know our acceleration is going to be equal to zero. And this brings us into the topic of equilibrium. So we're going to redefine net force as the vector sum of all forces. So therefore, at equilibrium, we're going to want a net force equal to zero because we don't want uh, any forces uh, successfully acting upon this object and changing uh, an acceleration, for instance, because we want our object to be in equilibrium. So we have static equilibrium, which would be an object at rest, and we have dynamic equilibrium, which is going to be an object in motion. But this motion has to be a motion with constant speed and direction. So basically an object moving with the same speed in a straight line. All right, next we're going to be talking about Newton's second law of motion, which states that acceleration is proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass. So here we go back to that 
um, law we stated earlier where force is equal to mass times acceleration. But it's important to realize that not just any force but the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So when we say force equals mass times acceleration, we are always to assume that that force is the net force for the system. And lastly, we're going to talk about Newton's third law of motion, which states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And a better way of stating this for forces would be that for every force, there is an equal and opposite force. So in the equation below, we see an example, for instance, where we say that the force of object 1 on object 2 is equal to the opposite force of object 2 on object 1. And we also see that in a picture below, for instance, if you're pushing on a wall with 100 newtons of force, the wall is going to be pushing back with 100 newtons of force toward uh, you. And we think about that um, when we push against the wall, we don't fall through the wall normally. Um, so therefore, there must be an opposite and equal force pushing back at us. All right, lastly, we're just going to be talking about three common forces that we're going to see a lot throughout the course. And the first of these is the force of gravity which we refer to as weight, and its notation is f of g or w, and we see that the force of gravity is equal to its mass times the acceleration due to gravity, and that's going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And this force is always going to be vertical and in the downward direction. Next we have normal force, which is also called support force, and its notation is f of n or n, and it's the force from a surface onto an object which prevents the object from falling through the surface. So basically, if we think of a person standing on a stage, obviously the person is going to have a force of gravity or a certain weight pushing down on that stage. And the stage is going to push back up towards the person with the same magnitude of the force of gravity, but in the opposite direction. And this force is going to be upward and perpendicular to the surface. And basically, it prevents the object from falling through the surface. And lastly, we'll be talking about tension, which is the force in a string or rope. And the notation for this is going to be F of T or T. And below we have an example which says, a 60 kilogram crate initially at rest is pulled horizontally. There is an 80 newton force of friction between the crate and the floor. With what tension force must the rope be pulled to achieve an acceleration of 0 0.5 meters per second squared? So to start this off, we're going to want to draw a vector diagram of all the forces acting on our box. So first of all, uh, we're going to have obviously a force of gravity which is pushing the box down onto the ground. So in this case our force of gravity is going to be equal to our mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So that's going to be 60 kilograms times negative 9.81 meters per second squared which is going to give us a force of around negative 589 newtons. We're also going to have a normal force opposing the force of gravity. So it's going to be negative force of gravity. So it'll be a positive 589 newtons. Now we also see that it says we have an 80 newton force of friction between the crate and the floor. And then we're also looking for the tension force so as we can see in the picture, the person is pulling the object to the right. So if we draw our forces here, we're looking for our force of tension, and then we're given our force of friction, and we're going to label that as negative 80 newtons. So next, in order to start the problem off, uh, we always want to write our net force equation. So in this case, our net force is going to be equal to the sum of all the forces acting on the object. So we have a normal force, we have a force of gravity, we have our tension force which we're looking for, and we have our force of friction. So in this case our normal force and our force of gravity are going to cancel each other out. So really this is all we're interested in here. Uh, next we're going to want to actually solve for our net force because we're, we have our mass and we're given the acceleration which we want to achieve. So our net force is going to be equal to our mass times our acceleration. And in this case, our mass is 60 kilograms, and our acceleration 
is going to be 0 0.50 meters per second squared. So therefore, our net force is going to be 30 newtons. So lastly, we want to go back to the question and see what we were asked. And the question was asking us what tension force we have to apply in order to achieve this acceleration. So we're looking for a tension force. So now we have our net force of 30 newtons, and we can set it equal to our tension force, which is what we're looking for, plus our force of friction, which was negative 80 newtons. And basically, when we solve for a tension force, we end up getting 110 newtons. So this is our answer. Alright, that's all for this video guys. Thanks for watching.